Hey guys, welcome back to another commentary done by Digby. This is Vermin versus Pandora Game 2 on Dark Origin, or Neo Dark Origin, I should say. Game 1, Ver Vermin actually looks strong at various portions, going for what looked like initially an attempt at Crazy Zerg style, but didn't quite fill in the drone count, and then the Mutalisks weren't sufficient to stop Pandora from breaching top right as... Uh, as the uh, irradiate was able to come online. Part of it is, is I feel like that works really, really well when you are able to delay science vessels for quite some time with a really sufficient mutilisk harass. And it's a little harder to pull off otherwise, but anyway. So, what is this map, Neo Dark Origin? It is an ASL map. If you're not familiar with it though, you've got the lower right-hand corner. You can see where this is fairly abusable for, there, it's still buildable from turrets, but this is an area where mutilisks can dive in and out and create some havoc fairly wide natural expansion. You do have this third, which is nearby and fairly defensible. Granted, there's some high ground shenanigans you can come, but it's kind of hard to, to group your units across this area to do to abuse the high ground there. Better for, I think, mech plays versus uh, more in the TVP sort of sector. And you can see where the, you can get bunched up with medic marine balls or lurker lines or anything along those lines across these corners. But uh, Looks like uh, we saw a Zerg extractor trick there for a brief moment. Ooh, we're seeing a nine pool, so keep that in mind. But the one thing I do find interesting about this map is once you're past the third, there are like you're you have to take another expansion, what in what feels like enemy territory. Like you get across these bridges, it becomes difficult to reinforce either location past that. So I really feel like a lot of the play comes down to early aggression and who's more successful in the early game. Uh, as far as who had not not even who has map control, it's like who who ended the game early. In the meantime, Pandor doing something interesting as well, which is going to cost him. He's going for a forward barracks, and he's going for a forward barracks in kind of an awkward spot, to be honest, because this isn't this isn't a fully sealable location near his natural. So with this forward barracks, maybe he's trying to hope that he baits Vermin into thinking that he's. He's going for a 14 command center, but here's the thing. All these Zerglings are already on the way. So Pander's gonna have his work cut out for him, trying to defend this hatchery alongside, and yeah, now these Marines having to scramble back. He's gonna need a bunker inside his main to defend this. SCV taking a little bit of damage right there already. This SCV needs to delay these guys as long as possible. And if I saw, yeah, more Zerglings in construction for Vermin, cause he can get a lot of damage done. And also having this drone, interior where it could create some disruption along that line could be huge even if the zerglings here's the thing yeah even if the zerglings don't breach the ramp that forces a lift off and this is fewer marines that are potentially going to get built early and this is a denied natural expansion plus look at all these scvs that have to sit off the line one scv down vermin doesn't have to he doesn't have to march up here you can keep the six zerglings back and just force pandor to shove his way down and that's going to be a massive economic hit early that, pa that Pandora has to take. And it looks like he's going to pull an old TVP maneuver and build the command center on the high ground and maybe try to float it down across the line. But if I was seeing this from Vermin, I might even just prioritize... It looks like he's going lair initially, but I might have even pri uh, prioritized Zergling speed and played from there. And unfortunately, he's not catching the SCV. Well, maybe he's catching the SCV. Now finding that SCV but it's just going to let it go. Let's see if he can blockade the ramps and keep the SCV from getting additional information because this is key whether... Yeah, he's trying to play a guessing game, almost like a Markov... <laughs> playing a... Uh, Markov is the wrong word. Um, Mont uh, Monty Hall problem right there is, where's, where is it going? But right now, finding that there's an expansion up, seeing that there's no drone saturating at the natural and gets past the drone, that is huge. So going to be able to walk in and see that layer at the late stage of completion. That's not putting him in a better position to deal with the Zerglings that are starting to dash towards this natural expansion, but that at least lets him know that he needs to worry about a Mutalisk follow-up. And honestly, I would have skipped things and get some more ground units, get some more barracks up just to survive right here, because now Vermin able to wipe out the Marines that are at the low ground, and these Marines taking additional damage, and his barracks are floating, so it's going to be up to SCVs to defend. No Marines remaining. Zerglings killing SCVs, and there's GG from Pandor. Yeah, Pandor, that's unfortunate. Just refusing to make a bunker all the way around. If he had built a bunker multiple times, uh, would have been in a much better situation across the board. But anyway, we're tied one apiece. We're going to go into game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Thank you for listening.